Good day everyone, welcome to the first installment of the Aviation Pro question box answering videos. Um, here from Buenos Aires, as you can see it's very nice weather outside, very sunny. Um, now a couple of weeks ago I posted a video where I uh, kind of introduced the Aviation Pro question box. It's a thing that you can uh, leave questions in and then uh, I will try to answer those questions in this video. So um, yeah, we're, we're here at the first episode and uh, I'm looking forward to kind of start this series and to uh, be able to share some aviation knowledge with you guys and then uh, uh, hopefully together we can learn stuff. So I'll record these videos kind of on the go, uh, maybe at different destinations. Uh, uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, so the first question that I want to answer, uh, I'll give a special wing wave shout, shout out to uh, Jose. Thank you, Jose, for posting the question. Um, and Jose's question is, how did you find your vet sim and flight simulation experience translated to real-world training? Do you think it helped and make it easier? Or did you have to unlearn a lot of habits you acquired in the flight simulator? Well, very good question, Jose. Uh, thank you for posting it. Uh, also, thanks to the other people who've posted similar questions. There were quite a few questions uh, on this subject. Um, now, it's a very good question because... Um, of course, when you think back about the old days uh, where there was no flight simulation, no computers to do all this, uh, people had to learn how to fly and they like they uh, read magazines, airplane magazines, uh, but there was no hands-on experience. And today with VATSIM and flight simulation, it's totally different. You can really simulate a very realistic flight, flying from A to B with full A to C surface, uh, you know, people who are acting as air traffic controllers. Um, yeah, that, that's just great stuff. It's it's such a such a cool thing to um, has, has, have as a hobby and uh, to turn it into your real job. Um, now, in terms of uh, how it affects your flight training, um, I think it really helps to give a kickstart to your flight training. Uh, not only for the selection process when you go through flight school, you just you know gain a lot of knowledge about aviation, about flying, about what it's like to you know fly planes for a living basically you kind of get an idea of what an operation from A to B looks like um, uh, you get motivated by it you you know by gaining all that knowledge and by practicing in flight simulator flight simulator uh, on VETSIM for example you uh, yeah you just I think uh, it motivated me a lot to learn even more about aviation and that motivation also helped with the selection process. Overall, I think you get kind of a kickstart because you have, you know, that's a bit more knowledge compared to a person who maybe doesn't, ha uh, doesn't have that experience or hasn't done any flight simulation as a hobby. Um, so where do you see that back? You see it in specific things like the theory, uh, it, it's, it's a bit easier to catch up with that it's a lot of theory in a short time but you know subjects like um, uh, IFR VFR communications that's quite easy yeah, you can do that quite easily uh, a bit of air law maybe some more of the general subjects like uh, the principles of flights which involves a lot of physics and general navigation you know those are a bit more theoretical but then other subjects you can easily catch up with and uh, quite easy to do um, when you're flying, uh, what really uh, helped me, I think, a lot was flying on VETSIM and being able to, to talk to air traffic control. Of course, you learn IFR, VV, VFR phraseology in the theory phase, and then you put, have to put it into practice when you fly the real plane, you know, on the first flight, basically. Uh, but if you have that experience already, it's very easy to just tr transmit to A to C and then uh, while flying, because that's also you're going to be very busy with a lot of impressions, you know, the first flight. Uh, a lot of things, but uh, having that ability to just, you know, quite effortless, effortlessly talk to A to C by pressing that push the talk button, that really helps. Flying wise specifically, I mean, you get, you know, the systems also when you later on, of course, uh, do training in the flight simulator, full flight simulator. Um, you know, I've flown a lot of Boeing 737 in flight simulator and when I had the multi-crew course, um, it was very easy to catch up with that team because you know already the systems. Um, so in that sense, it's it's very easy. You just have that head start compared to others, pe other people maybe. Um, specifically flying wise, also a little bit, I would say, I mean, you get a general sense of the yoke inputs, the throttle in inputs and rudder inputs. Of course, it doesn't translate directly into real life, especially when you have um, you know, flight dynamics in like Microsoft Flight Simulator may not be that accurate. Maybe X-Plane is a bit more accurate in that, but 
it doesn't really matter. You get a general general sense of you know when I add power on a simple airplane, um, uh, you know the, the the nose will pitch up, and when I remove the power, the, the nose will pitch down. It, you just get a general sense of of that flying, you know, the physical flying stuff. So that's that's I would say uh, yeah, you can quite easily catch up with that. Um, does that mean though that you without any experience you're not going to be able to catch up well with all this no definitely not that's the thing about flight training everyone starts with different uh, levels of background knowledge so some people have been flight simming some people have been gliding a lot uh, flying gliders so they have a lot of you know actual flying experience uh, which is I think very good as well some people have no experience whatsoever some people have a lot of theoretical knowledge or background maybe they've done a uh, study about uh, you know physics or uh, f physics of flight you know uh, something more technical but in the end everyone ends up on the same on the same uh, path on the same level so uh, even though you might start a bit higher uh, someone will easily someone else will easily catch up with that and that's what the flight training is also about it's to get everyone uh, at that same level so don't worry too much about that if you're not, not uh, into flight simulation at all. Um, then lastly, about unlearning things, uh, yeah, you will encounter that, absolutely. Uh, it may be some you know, small phraseology things or a thing I, I have a tendency to do, uh, especially back then. Uh, you know, when I'm reading a checklist, I would often say uh, parking brake is set or fuel control switches are cut off. But you know, these are the little things that the flight instructor will tell you. Uh, you have to say, yeah, parking brake set, fuel control switches cut off. You know, um, just very strict, uh, basically. So some of those simmer isms uh, catch up uh, or yeah, uh, get in there. Um, what else? Well, I think if you fly in the simulator, that's of course a big thing. Uh, you've been flying uh, on that sim uh, single pilot. Uh, you've been trying to fly that 737 or whatever aircraft around uh, like that so um, you do have to get used a little bit to the multi-crew environment so uh, in the beginning you might have to have a tendency to kind of reach over to a area of responsibility in the cockpit which is not yours or you may have a tendency to um, kind of be too much on top of things while uh, it's actually the responsibility of the other pilot okay so I think especially in that phase you're gonna uh, you know, find that you need to uh, learn a little bit on how to uh, you know uh, how to view, view that area of responsibility and uh, all the different uh, tasks that are involved with every single pilot so uh, in that sense yeah uh, that's something you kind of have to unlearn but it's not these are not big things these are small things and what's important here is that you're open to unlearn uh, that you're open to a change I mean you're open to learn things so you're also open to unlearn things uh, you know whereas you for example might um, have a flight simulator habit in somewhere yeah it takes some time to maybe get rid of that someone else may make a mistake because they they did don't have flight simulator experience but they make some sort of mistake and they also need a few flight lessons to get over that mistake so again what i'm getting to everyone is getting uh, at the same level in the end so don't worry too much about that one thing i would say though personally i never practiced uh, uh failure management in flight simulator i think that's really a multi-crew thing uh, so i really say kind of consciously save that for uh flight training later on i mean it's very easy to just uh, practice a lot of failure scenarios but especially failure handling is something that's very much a multi-crew effort uh, again with the areas of responsibility uh, you know uh, just conferring with your colleague on uh, how to deal with the situation and uh, dealing with different uh, actors that are involved you know the ground the cabin it's it's a very dynamic uh, setting and you cannot really recreate it in flight sim and i kind of don't want to uh, confuse myself too much especially in that area uh, you know simple things like muscle memory uh, uh, you know when you learn to fly an airplane like the, the Boeing 777 or 737 uh, you're gonna be you know flipping a lot of switches and and when you learn the memory items you know okay uh, I'll throttle arm switch here throttle here fuel control switch here and fire handle switch there um, and yeah in your own home simple home cockpit setup you cannot really um, uh, you know uh, create that muscle memory so yeah that's something I consciously kind of 
um, uh, left out. So, yeah, I hope that kind of answers your question. I know I've been uh, going on for a little while, but uh, I hope uh, this gives you a bit of an insight. And uh, yeah, and if you're thinking about flight training, definitely go for it. It's it's great fun. It's a great adventure. And uh, yeah, um, the flight simulator hobby is just amazing, and it can get you to great places. So. Thank you for watching this uh, answer video here on the AVH Pro channel for the AVH Pro question box. If you want to leave your question, make sure you uh, check out the Google Forms in the link below in the description or card, card will pop up here somewhere. And um, yeah, we'll see you on the next video and uh, take care and cheers from Buenos Aires.